Hey guys, this is Christopher from InventBox, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the lathe for drilling and for boring. If you're using a boring bar, you're going to need an existing hole to start boring. So naturally, most of the time you're going to need to do your drilling before you do any boring. So to start drilling, you're going to need to take out your live center, or whatever you have in your lathe's tailstock. And to do that, you can just pull it back until it'll stop and then if you keep going a little bit it'll break the taper out of the slot and then you can just put in the drill chuck and as long as it has the same taper it should be able to fit in pretty snugly and now you can start drilling with a chuck in my chuck here, I have a 3 8 piece of aluminum that I'm going to be drilling. So you could just go ahead and put your drill in the chuck and then drill a hole. But the drill bit, because it's so long and thin, is going to want to bend and walk along the surface and it's not going to want to stay in the center of your part. So the way that you solve that is with a center drill. Center drills are shorter. Um, you can see it has a point on both ends. But if you just take a look at one end, it starts out pretty big, and then it's got a taper um, right here. It's a 60 degree taper, and then it's got another straight part that's called the pilot of the center drill. This one has an eighth inch pilot, 60 degree countersink, and then a 5 16 body shaft. Basically, this is not gonna bend as much. It's a lot sturdier, and you can just uh, put a hole, a little hole, in the center of your part. And once the hole is started, then you can go to your other drill bit that's the right size and drill what you want to drill. Once the center drill is in your drill chuck, you're almost ready to start. But first, we need to lock the tailstock in place so that it doesn't slide around. And make sure that the tool post doesn't interfere with the drill chuck or the headstock chuck and then you'll be ready to start drilling. Most of the time there's a lever here that will lock your tailstock, but I have a nut on mine that I have to tighten to lock it. Now this won't move, and we can feed into our part there without any interference from our tool post. So when you're drilling with a center drill, there's a couple things you have to keep in mind. First of all, this tip is pretty fragile. So you want to feed in very gently until you get to the, um, the tapered section of the center drill. Um, normally I, I spin them around 800 RPM for steel, but since this is aluminum, I think they go a little bit faster, but it doesn't matter as much when you're just center drilling because you don't have to worry about surface finish normally. Now, um, I'm just going to feed in so that I get all of the pilot in and a little bit of the tapered section and then stop and put the other drill bit in. Now we have the full pilot, this eighth inch pilot, in the aluminum, and there's a little bit of a countersunk portion um, on the hole. Now that we have the hole started with our center drill, we can go ahead and put in our other drill bit to finish the hole up. Now with this 3 16 drill bit, um, I'm going to drill 3 8 of an inch into this piece of aluminum. Now to measure the depth of the drilling, there is some indexing over here on this shaft. So normally you just go all the way back to zero and then slide this until it's at the front of your part and then feed in however much you want. But if I take this all the way back to um, zero, it'll knock out my uh, the taper of my drill chuck. So I can only take it back to about half inch 
and that is my starting point. So if I want to drill 3 eighths, then I just have to start at half and go to 7 eighths. Um, it's the same distance, so I just have to subtract a half inch or add a half inch onto my measurement. So at half inch, which is my starting point, I'm going to slide the tailstock until the full diameter, the first full diameter, is level with the face of my part up here. When you're measuring the depth of a drill, you don't normally measure from the tip, the, the point of the drill bit, you measure from the first full diameter. So now I have it lined up so that that is in the front of my part, the full diameter. And I can lock this tailstock in place now and drill until this is at 3 8 And then it should be at the correct depth. Now it's a good idea to oil the cutting edges of your drill bit before you start drilling. Now I'm going to cut this 3 8 of an inch deep. So that is how you can use a center drill and a standard machining drill bit to put a hole at any depth into a part on the lathe. Now there is another way to do this. You can also use a milling end mill, um, like this one, it's a flat end mill. Um, in your drill chuck, you can drill into your part using this. The advantage of that would be, as long as it's center cutting, you don't need to use a center drill before you use the drill bit. You can just plunge right in with this. Another advantage to this would be because it's flat on the surface, not pointed like a drill bit, that means um, the walls, the shoulder at the end of your hole is going to be flat rather than tapered, if that's what you want. So I'm gonna flip this part around and just use this end mill to drill instead of a normal drill bit and center drill. It's important that before you do any drilling with end mills though, you have to make sure it is a center cutting end mill. This one right here on the left is center cutting. You can see that the cutting edges go all the way to the center of the end mill. But this one is not. There's a hole in the center of the end mill where there are no cutting edges. You cannot plunge into your part with this one. So you have to make sure that it's a center cutting end mill before you do this. So if you're cutting with a flat end mill like this, it's a lot easier to zero out the surface. You don't have to try to line up the first full diameter with the front of your part. You can just push it until it touches and then tighten it down right there. And you know that the front of your drill bit is at the front of your part. This time I'm using a quarter inch end mill and I'm going to be plunging in a quarter of an inch deep. So again, I'm going to oil it and then start cutting. Now whenever you're using an end mill for drilling into your part, you want to make sure that you start off very slowly. If you feed too quickly into your part at the beginning, it will misalign and it won't be centered anymore. But after you get maybe a sixteenth inch in, it's less likely that it will go off center. So you need to start gently and then you can speed up a little bit. Now after every operation we do, you always are going to want to deburr the edge right here. There are a couple different ways to do that, um, but I like to use a countersink. You could mount the countersink in your drill truck and come up here and actually um, cut the edge to make a fine countersink. But you can also just turn it on and use your hands to deburr. If you put it in your drill truck, it might give you a little bit of a cleaner result, but this works for just um, deburring. So here's the part that we drilled. You can see that on one side we have a 3 16 hole all the way through, and on the other side we have this quarter inch counterbore that's a quarter inch deep and a nice straight shoulder on the inside. Now that I'm done with the drilling, I'm going to show you how to use a boring bar like this to bore a pre-existing hole in your part. If you're going to be boring your hole bigger instead of drilling your hole bigger, you need to make sure that the tip of your boring bar 
small enough to fit inside your hole. If your hole is too small, then you'll have to use drilling. One of the biggest advantages of boring over drilling is that you can bore a hole almost any size that you need. For example, if you wanted a hole that was exactly 0.864 inches in diameter, you're not going to be able to find a drill bit that exact size. But with a boring bar, you can feed it in and out to any diameter that you need. So almost any operation that you can use a tool like this on the outside of your part, you can do the same thing with a boring bar on the inside of your part. So a tool like this would be for external features and the boring bar is for internal features. Almost everything about um, making straight diameters and shoulders and tapers is the same when you're using a boring bar. Except that you can't see it as easily because it'll be inside your part. Now whenever you're cutting with a boring bar, it's important to remember that feeding out is actually feeding into your part and feeding in is actually feeding away from your part. Now I'll just take a pass so that you can see what it looks like. So as you can see, there's not a whole lot different when it comes to boring rather than external operations. Except that it's just a little bit harder to see what you're doing and it's harder to measure it. Other than that, they're pretty similar. Actually, boring and external turning are fundamentally the same process. Here's the tool that I use for boring, and here's the tool that I use for turning. They actually look really similar, um, the geometry of them. They both have their cutting edge right here. They both have relief in the front and the sides. And even from this side, they have relief on the bottom. In the next video, I'm going to get into why and how these tools cut regardless if it's a boring or external or any other tool that you would use on the lathe. So I know that this video is probably really boring, especially the last part, but I hope it was also very informational. So in this video I covered how to use drilling with a center drill, a regular drill bit, and even a milling end mill. And then after you're drilling, you can use the boring bar to increase the size of your hole and add chamfers or anything else on the inside of your part. So if you found this video to be boring or informational, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see the next video on tool geometry, make sure you subscribe to get that and all of the next videos to come.